First, let me start. You know, I've been waiting really to kind of make some announcements on some personnel. I, th I think you guys have anticipated this. Uh, let me first start with uh, Toye Adewan. Uh, as you know, Toye uh, was our starting center. Uh, Toye, Toye has been diagnosed with uh, congenital spinal stenosis. Uh, obviously, he was born with it. It's a narrowing of the spinal canal that makes it... Um, um, we, we, he's been to a couple different specialists. He's been advised to not play football. Uh, we've known that for several weeks, but we wanted to just... Uh, uh, take every avenue, see everyone we could, get as many opinions as we can. Uh, but Toye Adewan has been uh, advised to no longer play football. Uh, the good news is uh, uh, he's been a student coach for us over the last month or so, last three weeks or so. Uh, he will stay at UNM, he will get his degree, he will go on a medical scholarship, so it won't affect his scholarship or affect his education. But obviously it's, it's devastating to Toye his family, uh, he made a tremendous investment in this program, uh, and it also hurts us without saying, but that, uh, that pales by comparison to what it does with the young man. Uh, two other players that we've never officially announced, uh, Johnny Visciano, uh, who two years started at offensive tackle, we redshirted him last year. He had had a concussion a year ago. Uh, he's had no recent concussions, but over the summer, it, just talking to doctors, talking to his family, talking to Johnny, uh, he just felt it was in everyone's best interest. We agreed it was in our best interest as well that Johnny Visciano no longer plays. And the same is true with Richard Winston. Uh, Richard Winston, an outside linebacker from Phoenix, had a concussion last year during the season. Just look, you know, talking to different doctors, talking to specialists, no recent concussion, nothing happened this year. Just uh, it's probably best for all parties that he doesn't continue to play. So those three players are no longer active. They all will go on medical scholarship. Uh, they all will stay at UNM. Uh, they all will graduate. They will all have all the, all the resources that would have been provided, obviously, with academics, with tutors, uh, certainly our support certainly access to all the facilities. They're still a part of our team. They're just not active and will no longer play football. Um, you know, getting back, you know, just starting on this week, uh, it certainly seems like a long time ago since we played Arizona State, you know, that, uh, uh, that, that game Friday night. And how it happens as coaches, I think we got back at 3.30 in the morning by the time we got home. We were in 7 o'clock Saturday morning, uh, turned it around, was in all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Players came in Sunday. We watched the Arizona State tape. Uh, we moved on to Wyoming. We gave the players yesterday off. Uh, obviously, it's an important game. It's the first conference game. Uh, it, it's two teams that uh, desperately need a win. And, uh, you know, I think the best is ahead for this football team. I don't think we're playing our very best football right now, but I think we're capable of getting better, and I think we're going to be able to put it together as we move forward. Uh, we're still relatively healthy. Uh, just talked about three guys that are no longer playing football, but we're, we're relatively he healthy. I've been, in, I've been really pleased with the attitude of our coaches and our players. Uh, we've got to get better. We have to get better. We have to get better. And that's what we're trying to do. So uh, no sense doing a whole lot of talking. I know I'd rather let you guys do questions. Uh, so who wants to start it off? Rick. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Smith. Yeah. Uh, Coach, the you know, talked about that Tulsa game being a pivotal game early on. This this got the same kind of makings, doesn't it? Uh, I think, honestly, for us, and there's a lot of people like us, every week is so pivotal. You know, um, you, know you look back at Tulsa, I knew what Tulsa would be. Uh, offensively, what they had over 600 yards on Oklahoma Saturday, had 40 points. And that's with Oklahoma's offense running up and down the field. Every game for us is pivotal, every single game. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's but keep in mind also, it's, it's, it's pivotal for Wyoming as well, just like that game was pivot, pivotal for, for Tulsa coming in. So, you know, all that's kind of philosophical. Um, you know, I think those are great things to talk about, write about, so on and so forth, but really to narrow the focus and just figure out a way for us to get better 
and for us to win a, win a football game. I mean, winning a game is the number one tonic for everything. It doesn't matter if you're in Laramie, Wyoming, or Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Albuquerque, New Mexico. But what we have to do is get better X and O wise, get better execution wise, and maximize everything we have. I do think we're better this week right now on Tuesday than we were a week ago on Tuesday. I think we're continuing to uh, get a little more mature, get a little more experience on the offensive line. I think defensively, we're, we're at a position where we can really start to improve now. So again, I think the best is ahead of us. Um, uh, it's pivotal standing here right now, but next week at this time, it'll be just as pivotal with New Mexico State coming in here, whether we win or lose this game. So. As far as the big picture with the Mountain West Conference, uh, I mean, teams had a t uh, some tough games, obviously, last week, right. but uh, three weeks in, no real quality wins. Uh, how are you seeing the conference? Well, I think Boise State, two Bo Boise State Washington. beat the first week, beat Washington. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of teams and somebody has to emerge. If you said right now who was probably the most impressive right off the bat, it would be Boise and it would be Air Force. I think Air Force has done an outstanding job. I had a chance to watch a little bit of their Michigan State game. That's why when you want to write the story of or talk about the philosophical thing of this game's pivotal, every week it's going to be that. I think we're in a position to be competitive in each and every week. As I said before, I think we're capable of winning every game left on our schedule. But I can't look at our schedule and say there's one game on our schedule that you say the Lobos are going to win that game. But at least we're in the position of being that right now. And, but, but you're right. I mean, you look around this league. Uh, last week, I think it was only Air Force, right, that won in our whole conference, and they beat San Jose. You come back this week, who won in our conference? I can't think of anybody that won in our conference. Boise beat, Idaho State. Boise beat Idaho State. San Diego State lost to South Alabama. Yep. Hawaii was the other winner. Hawaii beat uh, UC, Davis. Cal UC Davis. So you had Boise beating Idaho State, your alma mater, right? One of them. One of them. One of them. And you had Hawaii beating uh, UC Davis. So it's, it's, it's week to week in this league. And I think that's why I think the best is ahead of us. And that's why I don't want to get out there and just make, OK, we're at the crossroads right now. There's a lot of ball left. Coach, what do uh, either one of those quarterbacks have to do to separate themselves from the other? What are you looking for? Yeah, I don't think we're playing our best at quarterback, and I think it starts with that. But I think part of that is our responsibility, too. What is our identity right now? What, what truly are we? It's hard to say exactly what we are. We're not really executing the triple option real well. We're throwing it around, we're doing some little things, but we're not going to beat anybody doing that right now. So we're in a little bit of that kind of back and forth, trying this, trying that, a little too much, I think. So, and the quarterbacks are kind of like that right now. But a lot of things go into that with the offensive line situation. You know, I just mentioned two offensive linemen that would have been starters for us, clearly would have been starters for us. So we had to kind of rebound a little bit off that. We've got some young receivers that I think have some talent, but they haven't emerged yet. The one consistent thing on offense has been the running backs. I mean, that's obvious. So to say what each quarterback has to do, they got to play better. they got to play better, and they have to take advantage of their opportunities. But as you know, that guy behind center, there's 10 other guys that are either going to make his life better or make his life worse, and we're not clicking right now with all 10 guys. Coach, if we can't run between the tackles, and, and we haven't been able to do that very well, they, they figure this out on the outside and stop us inside. What do we do? Go to the passing game early, in the, early on? How long are you going to stick to the running attack? At well, time? we are a running team, and we have had some success. I mean, we have had some, you know, we have some have had some pretty big runs. We just haven't consistently done it. Uh, we're not going to abandon what we do. It, it's not time to do that. It's not time to panic. What we have to do is get better at what we do. Um, and that's the key to me. That, that's the key as we move forward. Uh, Arizona State was a pretty good defensive team. And they really had a good, good package. They played us really well. They really did. Uh, so it was difficult. 
I think the Tulsa game was a bit of an eye opener for us offensively. We really did think we could run it on Tulsa and we didn't. So I think we keep pecking away at what we do. Uh, that's why they pay us as coaches to, to have answers and to have solutions. And honestly, that's what this whole thing is about. That's it, finding solutions and finding answers. But, you know, we're not going to win by going out there and throwing it 65 times in a game. It's, that's not going to happen. We've got to find a way to consistently get the football to our running backs. Consistently get the football to our running backs first. Coach, using a dual quarterback like that, uh, you know, you always hear that, oh, when you have two, you don't have one. Do you think, how do you use that to your advantage? I mean, as far as. It's not ideal. Uh, you know, it's amazing. You know, Urban Meyer right now, I'm not comparing us to Ohio State by any means. Uh, he has two quarterbacks that most people in this country would die to have. He really has three. And he's caught in that right now. Who's the quarterback? They're struggling a little bit on offense. So obviously all of us would want one quarterback to emerge. But right now with me, it's more about our offense. It's more about our offense. You know, we've scored 21 points and 10, what, 10 points the last two weeks. And we have created a lot of turnovers. You know, you look at our punt team, four times in the last two games, we've been punting the football and retained possession for our offense. Two fakes and two fumbles by the opponents. So we've provided some possessions for our offense. We just haven't been able to score many points. So it, it, it's, it's, again, you know, the consistency of our offense. There's some reasons why we are inconsistent, um, but we need to solve those and we need to be clicking on all cylinders, more than just the quarterback. You know, you guys, everybody wants to talk about the quarterback much more than I do. I see it as a cumulative effect of just everything we're doing. What are the guys uh, that are on the field uh, psychologically? What's it like for them when there's two guys playing? Does their, their roles change, and does that change? Them? I don't think it. I don't think it dramatically changes much. It really doesn't. I, I think. I, I think because they're somewhat similar. You know, obviously Lamar's a little bit more of a runner. Austin's a little bit more of a thrower. But it's not so dramatic that all of a sudden it's a different style offense when one of those guys are on the field. I don't think it's so much that, but obviously you would want one guy in there, one leader, continuity with what you're doing. We just haven't been fortunate enough to really be in that situation. And hopefully somebody emerges as our offense emerges through the season. Do I see that happening? I don't know. They're, they're pretty close. They're pretty close and it's competitive and hopefully they bring out the best in each other. But yeah, it's not ideal. I can't stand up and tell you, yeah, I love having two quarterbacks. Coach, are you comfortable with Lamar throwing him? How have you seen him evolve from last year to this year? He's thrown better and he's thrown better. He throws it a little bit better. I think he's good enough that he can throw it and we can win. But we're not going to just focus and, and, and uh, on the passing attack when Lamar's in there. So that's not in our best interest. That is in his best interest. He's capable of throwing it better than he's thrown it here early in some games. Not that he's thrown it poorly. He just hasn't had a lot of opportunities yet. So I think it's, it's a still a little bit too early. You know, he's still a work in progress a little bit, and so are we. But I do think there's some potential there, obviously. At the start of the year, the question was really on defense. And then at this point, you know, three games into the season type deal, you're still kind of trying to figure out the offense. What's your analysis on the defense a couple games into the season? I think we have a chance to get better right now. I really do. I think, I think uh, you know, the Tulsa game, I'm not going to go back to that again. That, that was difficult. They're, they're, those guys, uh, anyone in the country would like to have those three receivers, 88, 2, and 1. Anybody in the country. Ask Oklahoma. Uh, the quarterback, same thing. Um, that was a great situation that Coach walked into there with 10 starters back on offense. That game, I'd like to play it again, we can't. We played better against Arizona State. We played better. I do think we have a chance to build right now. We're, 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 we've got a good foundation on defense, and I do think we're getting better. I think we need to pressure a little bit more because we have some guys that can pressure. I think we need to continue to be on the attack. But I've seen some, I've seen some really positive things. Um, you know, it's an unforgiving game, though. I mean, you know, you go back to Arizona State, uh, it was third and 10 at their seven yard line. It's a 24 to 10 game, right? Third and 10, they're discombobulated, two plays after the safety. They throw a swing pass out in the backfield. Kimmy Carson is in coverage, played his butt off the whole game. 
he thinks the, quarter, the quarterback's going to scramble right away, so he comes out of coverage. The kid raises up and throws the ball to number four. He goes 97 yards down the sidelines. I mean, it's an unforgiving game. Um, but, but I think we are playing better. I think we're right now in better shape than any time we've been since I've been here defensively moving forward. And I think we can be pretty good. I really do. I think we can be a pretty good defensive team. Coach, what do you remember about the goal line stand last year? I remember like it was yesterday. I remember that game like it was yesterday. I think they had 93 plays and we had 38 plays in that game. I've never been in a football game. 93 plays to 38 plays and we won the game. Because we scored on an interception return, we scored on a kickoff return, we had a big home run to Tyler Duncan, and then I believe Presley had a long run. So we were never on the field on offense. Uh, but I remember the emotions of that because we had a chance to put that game away a little bit earlier on offense. And we couldn't quite do it. They get the football back, they hit the big pass down the sideline to number four, who's back this year. And then all of a sudden they're knocking on the door. And we just blitzed them four straight downs, basically. And I remember Donnie Duncan hanging on for dear life in that end zone. And it, it makes you remember and it makes you think again the difference between winning and losing. Just, just the emotions of, of winning a game, how, how important that is. Coach, along those same lines, just matching up with Wyoming, I think the stats in here, it's four of the last five, decided by a touchdown. Just how close it is between. Yeah, it's and close. And you, you know, you go back, I mean, we're, we're, we're you know, Craig Bowles, a heck of a coach. A great coach came in from North Dakota State. I think he won four national champions at North Dakota State. He took over a program that was 18 and 22 in the prior 40 games, 18 and 22, and had been to a bowl game. We took over a program that was three and 37, with the lowest number of scholarship players in the country. So we're both rebuilding. Ours may take a little longer. So it's very competitive. It's very close. We're very evenly matched as far as just guys. So it's going, to be a, it's going to be a heck of a game. It really will. Their running back number eight to me is a premier player, uh, a Hill. Kid last year that had 130 yards against us. He's the one that had over 350 yards last year as a true freshman against Fresno in their last big win. He's a heck of a player. He's a, he's a big, strong running back that's a lot like the Ajay kid that played at Boise State last year. They have a quarterback, Kaufman, a transferred in from Indiana. Um, he started at Indiana back in the Big Ten when he was there. They've got some tall wide receivers. They're playing a lot of young guys on defense. But going up to Wyoming, uh, we, we know what kind of game this is going to be. This is going to be a very, very competitive game. Coach, what, what about the uh, kicking game? I know we missed a couple of real important field goals. Have you still are you still going to stay with Sanders? And yeah, we are. You know, we, we had that discussion after he missed. You know, it's three nothing with three minutes left in the first half in Tempe, and we had a chance to make the field goal to make it three three. Instead, we miss it. They get a little momentum and a little spark, and they take that ball at the end of the first half, and then score the first drive of the second half. But we thought about making the change right there with Zach Rogers. But Jason, again, to his credit, he came back and made the next one from basically the same spot on the field. And he's such a talent. He's such a talent that I think it's in our best interest, again, to keep working for what's down the road for this football team and this football program. And I think Jason Sanders is a guy that at some point will be a, will be a dynamic kicker for us. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep going with them. We've got tremendous confidence in him. Chris Lewis, were you pretty happy with his play? Is he a new starting guard? It's a great story. You know, Chris Lewis is a guy, uh, because of what happened with the offensive line, Chris Lewis, five plays into that game over in Arizona State, comes in, plays the rest of the game, plays every snap after the fifth play. Chris Lewis, as you know, is a defensive player, never played offense in his life. He's a big, talented player. He's 310 pounds. He's not polished right now. But the future looks really good. The future looks really good. And he came in and played pretty darn good. Uh, we started Romine at tackle. He played pretty good. So I saw some improvement on the offensive line, even though you know, it wasn't evident to everybody the way we ran the football. But we, we had some improvement in there on the offensive line. The pace of the game, we have this replay official that's sitting up in the booth. He can look down at every play, as you pointed out many times, and decide whether or not to review one. There was a sequence at the goal line there where they could make a first down just before the goal line. Um, I noticed from up top that the first down was made and the, the down markers were advanced to first down. 
um, I've watched the TV broadcast. They were calling it like it was fourth down that first play. Um, so they, I guess they had to check to see if they had the downs right. Yeah, I wish they had to they, check that safety in the end zone. He, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, let's, let's call it what it is. The I mean, speed it, yeah. of the play and not being able to get things right when we have all these things available to get things right, what, what about that? That's frustrating. You know, we've had two major replay situations here. I go back to the one last year to Boise. I know I shouldn't. Yeah. But that was picked as the number one mistake in replay last year. ESPN used that at their their um, um, talent meeting. And also the replay officials used that as the opposite of what replay is supposed to be. Um, and then that call Saturday night or Friday night, that was brutal. I mean, that was that was a safety. Um, obviously, the ball was this, the, the yard line to make. The, the, the line of scrimmage was a seven-yard line. He got outside the tackle box, but he just spiked the ball at the three-yard line. And there was no receiver in the vicinity. It wasn't that. So it was clearly a missed call. We've sent it in just like we did with the um, Boise thing. But again, you know, 24 to 12 with them kicking off from the 20-yard line is a lot different than two plays later. They hit a 97-yard touchdown on third and 10, and it's 31 to 10. So within all that, I do think the best is ahead for us. We, we were competitive. We actually really could have won that game, I believe, in Tempe. And I think we're getting better. But yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Coach, really, I, really I judge, I watched that replay at least seven times. Lunge has sitting right there, right at the quarterback. The yard line was on the six. He was right there. He had every vision there was, and the ball hit the three yard line. How could he miss a call like that? I don't know. I mean, it's just real obvious. Uh, if you send that film up to the uh, referees, I just can't believe yeah. how that guy could just miss that call. Yeah. One thing you know won't happen. We won't get to go back over to Tempe, and it's third and ten, <coughs> right? And yes. the ball's on the seven. We just start from there and replay the whole thing. It's it's over. It's done now. But yeah, it's um, it'll even out though. It'll it'll all even out as we keep pecking away. Anything else? All right. Okay, guys, thank you.